It is a sledgehammer fiesta in this opening round, boys. What is it, guys? This is Cobb. Casting some tournament here, man. We're starting off with the semi-finals and just the finals today. I just don't have time to watch the entire tournament, so we're going to be checking in with Mr. N. Sacco. A crowd favourite, it has to be said. In these here semis, both of these players, actually. Yakamaru also on three straight wins. So these are really just the giga chats of the tournament, man. What can we say? Okay, so yeah, both players start off with Crawler's Sledgehammers. Except we have Sacco on blue, opening for the Maxman, and Aki's coming out for red. Could be pretty damn close. Let's go ahead and skip through, see how this initial round ends. Oof. And it's got to be said. Sacco Sledgehammers. Very, very close to being able to hit level 2 here right away. I don't think there's enough XP left on the board for them to do it. Nah. Maxman kill steals, prevents the Sledgies from turning blue immediately on round 2. Probably going to be skipping deployment phase here, maybe? Oh my god. No bug action. Alright, awesome. So we have fang options. The problem is with high rank fangs early on is that they can just feed enemy units a crap load of XP. So you kind of want to avoid, like it's a little bit of a bait, you know? Um, even if they're chaff early on, typically good. Yeah, the high level kind of makes them uh, not so good, oftentimes. Sacco taking his time with this one. I wonder if we'll... Ah, it's only one scorpion, though. Well, actually, he does decide to go for it in the end. All right, man. I actually thought that maybe he'd go with the phoenixes, uh, similar to how red has gone. As soon as you see the uh, sledges on the field, kind of feels like phoenixes would be the good option. But picking up an early scorpion, I wonder if we'll see more of these nerds come down? <laughs> I don't know what is going on over there, man. That wifey's laughing at. Playing some WoW with the boys. Um, but yeah, okay. Scorpion plus range into the Scorpion here. The Stormcallers come out as well. A little curious. They fill similar roles. I just wonder what the plan is with the Scorp. I think it's grand if your opponent ends up going more sledges, but we don't see any of that. We actually just see mass phoenixes come out from red. So you gotta imagine, well, we have Maxman on the field. But it's three maximum to six phoenixes. They've got a lot of work to do, and we gotta win the chaff battle pretty hard here. The late arriving crawlers are gonna help us to that effect. But with the acolytes on either side, I don't know, dude, does red just take this chaff battle too quickly? It's a little tighter on this side because there was only one acolyte, and so this maximum is gonna find a whole lot of joy. And this is actually just gonna clean up everything over here. This side, not so much. Then the question becomes can these two phoenixes win the day? Building drops. Real bad timing. Oh my god, they actually do get the maximum dead just like that. And oi 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 oi. Red's phoenixes do actually win the day in the end. A bit less decisively than I thought they would, but there you go, they get it done. I'm just curious to see what Sacco does about this. It's always a little bit sketchy to now go into the stangs to try and deal with phoenixes just because uh, once your opponent already has sledgehammers developed. Um, yeah, the Stangs can have targeting problems, they can get stuck attacking Sledgehammers, and the Sledgehammers just turn them into scrap metal very, very quickly. And so Stangs are kind of off the table. Um, oh wow. Okay, dude. We see the Chunky Elite Rhino pickup. And there it is. Additional Scorpions come out. So we are actually going to be using the Scorps. Tell you what, man, the distinct lack of artillery on red side might start to become a little bit of a problem here. Still no additional anti-air units just yet uh, coming out for blue, which could well win the day. Can the scorpion actually take care of this rhino before it gets the job done on this base? Is it even going to connect? Oh my god. That had to have been real close to connecting over there, dude, but the, uh, the, uh, the absence of plus range in the scorpions... Makes so it's going to get a little bit target locked on the crawlers. And now it's up to the maximum of the stormies to get it done over here. But as it pushes in closer and closer, fewer and fewer storm crawlers are going to start to connect. And oh my god, it's actually going to make it a building. Just before the last phoenix goes down. So this phoenix is now going to get off a whole bunch more shots. Wipe out all of the tanks over here. Might have seemed like a real small thing. But yeah, that, that building killer is actually going to snowball into another red round win. Not too much concern though right now, man, if you're blue, to be fair. It's tickles of damage, you know? These damage tickles, they're more like shots across the bow. You still have plenty of time to react. 
super early on. Senior manufacturing specialist comes out and... God damn, okay, Sacco's not messing about. Is this going to be like melting point, melting point? Or melting point, melting point, maybe? More central? Going for the wide melters. Okay. I mean, these do kind of uh, kill two birds, one stone, right? They get to ensure that you're not going to get rushed down by rhinos, but at the same time, they also act as kind of soft anti-air against the phoenixes. So I see the thinking behind it. 350 supply left to spend. Surely it's too much, though, to just dump that into another melting point. Surely that's too much. Because then if your opponent, I don't know, if, like, Red just sells this rhino this turn... Yeah, you've just wasted way too much supply then into Melting Point. I'm almost a little bit surprised to see it come out, to be honest. Almost a little bit shocked. Given that if this Rhino's sold, like, what's this Melting Point really achieving at this stage of the game? And Sacco maybe just playing the long game with this. A little bit of base health comes out. Still no upgrades on the Scorpions. Be curious to see that. Plus range, or even actually uh, siege mode, I think they connect right away on the sledgehammers here and just kill a whole bunch of sledgehammers right off the bat. The range would be good enough. So a little surprised to not see that come out. But hey man, at least the melting point is actually going to have a good time. It is going to get its all-important kill, then move on to the phoenixes over here. So that's grand. The maxman over here as well, also still finding a lot of joy. And that said, we do turn the round right now. In favor of blue, and that's actually a lot of damage. But all right, surely we're going to see the cell on the rhino now from red. Yakamaru switches into the overlords. I wonder if this is going to be overlord with wasp production right away. We're looking at a lot of supply now. Goes into artillery and range. Okay, so we're going like the carry style of overlord. Plus range, ridiculous overlord artillery. The one thing I don't like, by the way, about uh, range enhancement overlord and overlord artillery is that the artillery cannons have 30 meters less range than the primary weapons on the overlord. So if the overlord stops at max range to shoot something like a melting point, it actually won't use the overlord artillery, dude. Like, it's like, just kind of bizarre. <laughs> kind of like a bizarre interaction going on, but... Okay... Ooh, plus range. We're going to see anti-air come out as well here straight away. Has Sacco got the read on this? Nah, he's going to jump barriers. All right, man. So we're going for the crazy rush strat here. All right, man. Damn, no cell coming out on the Rhino either. Quite surprised to see that. But all right. I tell you what, though, now that Sakura has the melting points unlocked, he's quite well situated to be able to deal with, um, like, a nutty overlord rush like this. I feel like melting points are one of the best ways to stop Rhino and overlord base rushes. Wall of Fire player comes down as well. Not a whole lot we can be doing about that. Sadly, that's going to kill off a whole bunch of stangs in the middle. The Rhino, once again, is kind of just going to be food for the melting point. But these big, uh, these goddamn Giga Chads over here are certainly going to make it a building. Artillery cannons lighten up the sledges as they go as well. Down go the nerds. They got to get this kill like right now though, because this guy is fit to drop. They do actually get the kill. And you know what? It's still not, it's still not exactly going to get this thing dead. Oh my God. The final projectile actually gets the building point dead. I'll eat my words. And just with the aerial superiority, looks like Red is going to take this. The Stangs, I don't know, man. Like, they're not bad for bringing down the Overlords. I mean, to be fair, like... Sacco's got options here. He can go Aerial Specialization Stangs. Ooh, especially with Senior Attack Specialist. That could actually be really, really good. Might not need to go more Melting Points, to be honest. Um, If you go down this route. Goes for the Amplifying Core instead. Wow. All right, I did not expect that. I did not expect that at all. Ooh, look at these crazy shifty plays we were going on here, man. Pulling these guys out the way, sending in the mothership wasps. And this is the thing, man. This can get out of hand real quick. If you're not careful. As soon as you have this many techs on a giant unit, the best play can sometimes be to just spam that giant unit every single turn. 
Sackle's kind of ready for that. Popping the aerial spec on the Stangs. Feels like it's almost definitely going to come out next turn now that we have wasp production on the overlords. Can these guys be repositioned? They can. The flanks are kind of well guarded. So I guess that's just never going to happen now. I wonder if we will see a huge repositioning play though at some point in this game. Can lead to at least one big devastating round win if you catch your opponent off guard with that. When it works, it really, really works well. But it is a big gamble. I wonder if we'll see Yakamaru come out with that. And alrighty. Here we go, boys. This melting point over here just not really going to be that effectual. It's going to be just hitting a lot of crappy kind of trash targets before it gets to look at the phoenixes. Oh, that's it. There's not much chaff left alive over here. Maybe it gets to connect sooner than I think. Similar thing going on on this side. As long as the next wave of... Ooh, never mind. The phoenixes actually drop before the next wave of wasps come out, and it looks like... Nope. I thought maybe the melting point would get to connect on this guy. Before the next wave of phoenix... Uh, sorry, the wasps. And it actually does in the end. Oh my god. Deeply unfortunate. From uh, Red's perspective. I'm sure he would have liked to have get this, uh, got this thing dead. Long ago. Now that said, we're looking at one melting point trying to kill everything here. Building going down helps quite a bit. Buy some time. Ooh, there was a maximum in the mix as well. That's also going to get a pick, and oh my god, they actually pull it off, dude. Okay, dude. This is getting... This is getting real tight. I actually think that this game ends next round. I think someone is going to win massively or lose massively next round. Wow. Who just picked up? Top supply specialist. So Yakamaru is going for the long game here, dude. He's not going to be going for any kind of cheeky plays with the jump drive. He's playing the long game. No big risky plays. Bro. That's quite surprising to me, man. I really thought that maybe he'd just spam overlords and drop a huge block of them here with like a couple packs of crawlers in the front and just send it down one side. Really thought that that might be the play he'd be gearing up for here, just when you've got this many overlords on the field. But he's actually, look at this, he's actually focusing on ranking up the overlords ahead of placing more overlords. Usually don't see it that way, man. Building tall with the overlords ahead of uh, just like mass wasp producers. Well, let's see if it works out, dude. He's getting even shiftier with the positioning of these guys now. Dude, I wonder if you're going to see any like huge nuke dodges or something. Or like javelin dodges with the repositioning tech on the overlords, man. Something that you got to be really, really careful of. When those things do become available. This poor blue overlord getting absolutely beamed down. Oh god, this is still going to be a real steep loss if you're not careful here. Both buildings going to drop at about the same time. Which means a very, very lengthy building debuff indeed. And if you're red, you're just praying for as many unit kills as you can get now. Before inevitably losing. But that's going to be... F oh my god, that's way more damage than I was expecting. <laughs> Oh god, okay. Sacco, full straight wins. There it is, man. The good old melting point long game. I tell you what, the Stangs and not over-investing in the Stangs just turns out to be the right player, man. That's where I'm 15, 1600, and Sacco's a giga chad. Alright, man, let's check out another game. Ooh, check this out, man. Sacco, full straight wins. We've got Napoleon, the French god Elio over here, also with full straight wins. Could be a Sacco versus Elio match. Going into next round, that'll be really, really tight to see. We've got a few other guys on 4-0 as well. A few dark horses, man. Good old Only Fangs. <laughs> He's in there with the shout. All right. Subhauser, also 4-0. Oh. All right, man. Let's see what we get next round, man. And all right. So what happens our next match is actually going to be following Mr. Elio going up against Sub Sour, dude. Oh, my God. All right, man. Both of these absolute chads on four straight wins so far. Elio on the blue side playing. Ooh, giant specialist. Of course, always a favorite of the top tier players. And, dude, again, another game where we're seeing chaff, sledgehammers, and a couple of maximum come up, man. Dude, I remember a time not so long ago where maximum were just never picked ever under any circumstance, man. Especially in, like, high-ranked games, you know? People just actively avoided them. Um, if you're going to go any sniper unit, it was Phoenixes, you know. Never, ever maximum, man. But there you go. 
Oh, well, maybe that explains it. <laughs> I should probably check the side of the map before laying down some observations, man. So, yeah, Red obviously starting off with Phoenixes. He is playing Aerial Specialist, Mr. Sobsour. And it's going to help out a hell of a lot here. Ooh, I thought maybe some of the Phoenixes might have latched on the uh, outer sledgehammers at that point real quick there. But I think the Arclight actually just clears chaff faster than the sledgies do, even though the sledgies are more expensive and there's five of them. The Arclights are just so much better at killing off crawlers. Um, yeah. And so as a result, Phoenix is probably going to find a lot of value over here. And they're going to have to as well. Oh god, okay. Only one Phoenix left alive. Oh my god, never mind. The Maxman has decided to end it all and walk in without sledgehammers. And so Red's going to take the first round, man. Alright, man. Ain't nothing but a peanut of damage. Hopefully we don't skip deployment phase here. Oh, lovely. Dude, the replays have been so much more stable recently, man. I love it. Okay. We have option rhinos, all blue here. Again, I think the fangs are a bit of a bait early on. The stangs must be tempting, though. Damn, sub uh, subsile going for the scorps on red. And the stangs come out for blue. Okay. So one stang straight into range. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I mean, I guess you've kind of got to, right? You need the stangs to stay behind your sledgehammers. Especially if you're against something that can kill them real easily, whether it's uh, sledgehammers or arc lights in this case, uh, on red side. So even though this is a really, really early tech pickup, it kind of guarantees that the stang's going to find a lot of value. Scorpion as yet, way off at the back for red. I'd imagine we're going to see that. Oh, I was going to say maybe in front of one of the buildings, but okay, I guess that that works too. Guess we're just trying to line this scorpion up so that it collides with as many of the sledgehammers as possible. So. Central position does make quite a bit of sense as well. 50 supply left to burn on red. Will we see like an early missile here maybe? To try and clip those sledgehammers? Is the 50 supply worth that? Or does he just keep it in the bank and let it roll over to the next round? I think I'd be quite tempted to just plop a missile here. Okay, drops it on this side. I just feel like the scorpion kind of has this handled. Then again, it's all really going to come down to how much value these nerds right here get. Now, without the sledgehammers alive to protect these guys, it's going to be curious to see. They're not the fastest at killing off crawlers, uh, Mustangs. So they're going to get held up for quite a while here, and oh god. Now they're getting connected on. they got to get these things dead, like, right now. They do finally get to connect. This is going to be a little bit too late. Yeah. And even if they get the win over here, so much left alive on this side, man. Scorpion actually getting a reasonable amount of work done. Okay. Whoa! Dude, Elio was like a ninja with that. Straight into extended range war factory. All right. Yeah, speed specialist. I, I actually really thought Elio would go into speed specialist, to be honest. Uh, given that when you're up against phoenixes like this, and scorpions also... You run a real risk of being just severely outranged by your opponent. And I feel like Speed Specialist is closing the gap quickly. Can uh, help out with that quite a bit. But okay. Decides to hop on into the Vulcan. He does have a bit of a chaff problem, to be honest. And the Stang's not quite able to handle it. The Cell and the Sledgehammers, by the way. Okay. Ditching the Sledgies. To be fair, how much were the Sledgies really getting done? You know what I'm saying? You might as well drop them. Like, the, the Sledgehammers were basically just chaff killers. Um, because they're dying so, so quickly to the Phoenixes anyway. Their only role was to really kill off the Crawlers, and there's much, much better options for that in the Vulcan. So it does make sense. But dude, I'm excited by the Extended Range War Factory, man. I think that's what's really going to turn the game here. And obviously Red now has an opportunity. He has a turn to scout what Elio picked here and see that extended war, uh, range war factory came out. And so he can kind of prepare for that a little bit. I wonder if we'll see range come out on the Phoenixes, maybe. Maybe with a plan to go into Electromag shop on the Phoenixes. No Electromag available on the arc lights. We do have Acid and, ooh, no Artillery mode on the Scorpions. So you can't really reliably connect on a war factory with the uh, Scorpions. Without artillery, you need them like ultra max range. 
to uh, safely land the acid attack against War Factory. So it's going to be interesting to see how Red adapts to that, because he's almost... He, he's, he's definitely scouted this. You know what I'm saying? Players of this caliber aren't just going to not scout what their opponent picked uh, for cards last round. But all right. Takes just a smidgen of damage. Things real close can change very, very fast. Range Specialist comes out. Not enough cash in Elio here to actually pick up the War Factory still. I wonder if we'll see the unlock come out on the War Factory this turn, because he is playing Giant Specialist. So you can just grab that for free. Looking more and more likely, the more cash he spins, that we probably are just going to see the free unlock on the War Factory here. Another Vulcan comes down. I think I do like the Vulcan buys. There's just a lot of late crawlers arriving. Fresh Scorpion comes out. Now, do we see range on the Scorpions here? It's curious, man. I don't really see many people running field maintenance on Scorpions ahead of artillery mode. But Subsawa is going for it. I just feel like the massively superior range on Scorps helps so much. Okay. Ooh. I see an Acolyte unlock. Come out from Elio. That is curious. Is that a mistake? I feel like that might be a mistake. Like, sure, like, are you really going to go into Arc Lights now? Going into, like, round five? Into this as well? Like, into Phoenixes and established enemy Arc Lights? And even Scorpions do very, very well into Arcies too. I don't know, man. Not that I, you know, would ever purport to know better than Napoleon. But I'm just saying... Alright, here comes the Scorpions, gonna absolutely eviscerate the uh, poor Vulcan over here, along with the Phoenixes. We gotta land some big shots here. Okay, yeah, that was a huge round of fire. That's basically gonna guarantee the win on this side. Then it comes down to a couple Phoenixes. Yeah, Red has totally got this. There's no way they get the Scorpion dead, let alone the Phoenixes. And Elio men getting chunked a little bit here, dude. Okay, we're getting towards... War Factory territory turns now. Got more unit options here. It's just one hacker here, so a uh, little bit crappy. Steel balls, maybe? Uh, for red? Maybe? Goes for the Stormcallers. Alright. Fair play. Then again, yeah, the Maxman probably would have been able to handle the Steel Balls relatively well. We see range come out on all of these nerds now. And look at this dude. Elio preempting. The storm call is coming down. Just gonna wiggle these guys back and forth to uh, distract fire from these guys. Should be pretty damn effective. Ooh, that fire placement probably wants to be like this side, right? Wow, we're gonna go for the greedy one in the middle. Oh yeah, hang on, yeah, that's really tight actually, of course, because the crawlers here now are gonna pull all of this enemy chaff in towards the middle. So as soon as one Vulcan just goes and shoots a tiny bit of- that was me making a fire noise by the way- to the middle. We're just gonna set all this alight and all these middle crawlers are gonna get absolutely roasted, dude. Okay, man. Cool. Giving him the old one-two, man. I like it. Still a bit curious to not see more Stangs come out. Then again, are they really required? All right. Absolute wall of fire. The chef is being pulled in towards the middle. Making an enormous difference. So it looks like we're just trying to burn down all of the chaff with just mass Vulcans and then keep the marksman safe at the back. I like this setup. It looks like it's working pretty tight. But this is where the real test comes in, right? These level 3 Stormcallers are going to eviscerate these Vulcans. Pretty fast. Ooh, they gotta be a little bit faster about it, though. Alright, man. They actually tie on one side. Take the dub on the other. Elio claiming another win, man. The War Factory was unlocked last round, by the way. Should point that out, too. Mash produce Sledgy, Wasp Swarm. I mean, Wasp Swarm was, like, the only real option here. Wasp Swarm was skip, right? Pretty much. We actually see level 2 Vulcan come down. Does that mean that we'll see it here as well? Okay. Just more fangs. 
Hither and thither, I guess. Nothing to really defend against the swarm, but at the same time, the Stang should be able to deal with it pretty nicely. Unless more of the wasps veer off to this side. Okay. Dude, this is gonna be this is gonna be a long game, man. This could be one of those. Okay, finally at last we do see another pack of stangs come out. Now is a pretty opportune uh, opportune time to do it. Yeah, as soon as I saw the stangs come out, I wasn't expecting the Vulcan, man. I thought it was gonna be something like uh Mustang explosive ammo. And go for like four packs of stangs on the back and use them to clear chaff instead of Vulcans. Um, especially when I saw the uh, scorpions coming out like this. Like, well... Vulcans may be a little bit vulnerable to this damage if the scorpions get to connect. But it's been working out so far, man. Actually, a lot of wasps. Wasps actually get panned over to this side in the end. Not right. See if these Vulcans got what it takes now, man. They don't have that wall of fire to rely on anymore, but they still cleared up the chaff pretty quickly. But as soon as the Scorpions get to connect, oh my god, even a level 2 Vulcan gets chunked so, so quickly. Oi, 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 did. Yeah, it's pros and cons, right? It's pros and cons between going Vulcan to clear chaff and Mustangs to clear chaff. Like, if you go Mustangs to clear chaff with explosive ammo, then you can expect your opponent to drop, you know, incendiary bomb and just more stone callers most of the time. Like, they'll go that route instead. Uh, whereas Vulcans, they'll go more giant killer, which we're seeing sub Sour do. He's adapting extremely well to Napoleon's plans. Senior defense specialist. Wow, we've got some really, really good options here, actually. Some really quite excellent options. Does Elio have faith in the long game? Such as to go for top supply specialist. Or is he going for the right now game? I actually don't think senior defense specialist really helps Elio's build right now. Goes for the top supply in the end. Yeah, I just feel like with these scorpions gaining levels and they've already got range, like, is more health really gonna help you that much? Like, most of your units are getting one-shotted, and the plus health is only affecting the three Vulcans. You know what I'm saying? And it's not like extra 30% health is going to benefit them that much. Like, they'll still die pretty fast. The barrier round on the fangs is real good. It's always a huge, huge power spike, at least until your opponent gets fire on the ground. And so we're almost certainly going to see something to that effect come out from red next round. But for this, but for this round, at least, we should see Elio's chaff be much, much more... Tanky, much, much more sustainable here. Buy him much more time. We're still relying really on the five marksman units to act as like uh, the carry unit for the team here. Everything else is just like what? Chaff and chaff clear. The only units that can really kill big stuff are these five marksmen right here. And just trying to keep them as safe as possible. Seems to be the name of the game. As my cat plonks herself right in front of the screen. Can't see anything right now. Come on, you. Come sit on my knee. Go, girl. Oh, she's a fat pudding. There she is. Go, girl. All right, man. What do we got here, man? What did I miss? Okay, chaff battle is almost over. We still have some stangs left alive. Maxman actually getting to connect now on these high priority targets, which is huge. Dinking down the scorpions. These are level three scorpions, though, man. They're going to take a while to chunk. In fact, oh my god, even these even these three-star maximum are really taking a while. Scorpion's pretty tanky, man. We have some cheeky little stangs here doing God's work. They're chipping down the building. But finally, as the scorpions drop in the middle, that basically spells the end. Uh, for Red's holdout. We actually have a Vulcan live as well. That's got to be a bit of a concern for Red here. I can see him just going, man, pick up a couple more units, maybe of... I wonder if we see anybody go Lightning Storm here, by the way. I don't think any of these options are particularly great. Maybe you go Shield of Ice. Lightning Storm, we actually do see it come out. All right, dude. Subsol trying to pull a round win back. Yeah, I kind of feel like... Ooh. Ooh. We don't see Incendiary Bomb come out just yet. 
for red. Yeah, my prediction for this turn would have been a couple more units of um, Stormies. Stormcallers here, maybe. Maybe even like Stormcallers on the sides uh, to get fire on the ground here. And then give them Incendiary Bomb. And then maybe just like barrier, barrier, you know, and go from there. Just to get some fire on the ground to chunk down the fangs. The Stormcallers would also serve the secondary purpose of helping to DPS down the Vulcans as well. But that's not the route that we go down, man. We end up going into the double short scorpions and just pile more scorpions on the field. Oh, rather, another scorpion on the field over here, at least. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, I'm actually gonna pan the camera this way to try and look under as many of the lightning storms as we possibly can. Otherwise, they get kind of blinding kind of quickly. The Maxman, by the way, really, really ramping up in power level right now. We're looking at elite Maxman, multiple level fours at this point for blue. So the Maxman are really the ones to watch uh, for blue. And for red, it's all about can his scorpions get the Vulcans dead in time? Because as long as the Vulcans live, the Maxman are kind of safe. One of them gets torched here by the Lightning Storm. And as the lightning storms clear up, we'll pen the camera back around. The Maxman very, very far back now also. Owing to the elite Maxman. Scorpion's about to just eradicate this poor Vulcan. This Vulcan's still kind of just living though, man. For now at least. And it's just about enough time. So the Maxman get to connect all over again and oh my god. The Scorpion's just not quite getting it done, man. They're just not quite chunking quickly enough. And you know what? What's even more worrying for Red? Is that yet more Chef actually still survived. There were still Fangs left alive on the field there. I feel like Red... It's imperative this turn, more than anything, that we answer the Fangs, man. The Fangs are just getting... They're just surviving for too long, man. And yeah, like, your Fangs also have shields. But at the end of the day, your opponent's got Vulcans, so he's torching your fangs like they're made of paper and poo. Whereas his fangs? It's like, you're having to individually shoot them all twice, and okay, there we go. The player that I thought that Red would make last round, he actually makes right now. With, oh my god, he actually places the stone callers on the sides as well, like I was suggesting. <laughs> oh my god, dude, did I just grow a wrinkle on my brain, dude? I think my brain just got a bit wrinklier, man. Hey, I'm proud of myself. There you go, you gotta take the, you gotta take the wins where you find them. And just go for the incendiary bomb on the stone callers as well. Actually going for another pack too. So just going to try and flood the battlefield with fire. Um, yeah. Fire on the ground. Really, really good way to counter mass shielded fangs. If you don't have explosive ammo mustangs. Which are also another fantastic way. To deal with uh, fang spam like this. But alright. This is going to be a lot of fire on the ground now too. Both players taking advantage of uh, oil and fire combo mechanics. And this is going to be real close, man. Is the fire on the ground going to be enough for Red to turn this around? He's got a lot to do, man. This is a level 3 Vulcan now. This thing has got real strong over here. So even if he wins the chaff battle, he has a lot of Vulcan health to cut through. All of these things leveled at this stage. And all right, boys. Let's see. Fire everywhere. Barry is going to hold out for a little while. The fire is going to start to mulch the fangs down here, as you can see. None of the crawlers will make it through the fire either. And so very, very quickly, both sides are going to start to run low on chaff. We've got some stang nets here as well, also burning down. The scorpion goes down on this right side. That's a huge deal. It means that this Vulcan, the level 3 Vulcan, by the way, is going to get to live that much longer. But it's going much, much better in the middle. With the higher level scorpions able to mully the Vulc in the middle. This guy's soon to follow, and it looks like at last it might be just enough. Oh my god, actually is it? No, it's not. There's too many Maxman left alive, dude, and if that Phoenix dies, which it does, it doesn't even matter if the rest of the Maxman died. The Stormcallers would just not have enough damage to ping down the Vulcan anyway, and so even though the round goes much better for Red with uh, Flaming Stormies, ooh, level 3 Fortresses, dude. That's a lot of barrier health, man. Oh my god. Even the Steel Balls. Is there any merit in the Steel Balls? Just because it's four packs of three stars? I wonder, man. Is there merit in that? I, oh, you can't go these if you're red. Yeah, you can't go the Steel Balls if you're red. 
They're just the maximum will just annihilate them as soon as they get close, right? And all right, we're finally going to see the big War Factory player come down. And dude, you know what's kind of curious about this? You almost get the sense that Napoleon, aka Elio, was like soft planning for this. Like he was just waiting for the mass Stormcaller investment to come out, knowing that it was very likely Red would have to go into Incendiary Bomb to deal with the Fangs. And he was just waiting, dude, to counter that crap with the War Factories. And now suddenly Red is in a position where he just doesn't have a reliable way to mow down all of these fangs, man. It's just it's just a lot of fangs. And while Stormcallers, sorry, uh, while Arclights are pretty good at killing off fangs, they still take two shots per like four fang units that they kill as soon as they have the barrier, you know? They're just not that reliable, man. Now, some Stormcaller missiles might get to land on this side just because of the distance of the War Factory from uh, where these guys are going to be shooting. So maybe we'll see some fire get on the ground here and here. But it's going to be real tight, man. It's going to be real tight. Okay. So the huge fortress is actually coming out for... Um, for red here as well with the barriers. That said, the barriers just don't really last that long. We do see some fire get on the ground on the sides as well. But is it going to be enough? None of these missiles in the middle are actually making it to ground. And so we have a lot of fang chefs still left alive. Actually kind of all over the place for blue. Which is a real problem because now the maxmen, as of about right now at least, are going to start connecting on very, very high priority targets. And they still have a lot of health left alive in front of them. Because suddenly the storm callers just aren't really getting anything done. Basically none of those missiles are connecting. I say as just a little pocket of missiles lands over there, but it's not close to going to be enough. And goddamn Napoleon does it again, dude. Five wins on the bounce for the French prodigy Elio. Oh my god! And once again he makes it to a final. Ooh, are we going to see a are we going to see a Napoleon versus a Sacco final here? Let's check out how the scoreboard's doing. Oh my god. It is actually going to be a Sacco versus Elio final, dude. Five straight wins for both of these chisel-chinned Giga Chads. It's going to be incredible. I'll see you guys there in just a minute. And all right, boys, it is happening. On the blue side, we have N Sacco, starting with good old supply specialist, trusty as hell, mass chaff stormcaller opener. Whereas on the red side, we have Elio. I believe he's playing aerial specialist, starting off with... Much the same, aside from the fact that we've got a few Arkies here, man. Can I just say, bleh, I can't stand Stormcallers. Dude, they make me vomit. Stormcallers is a starting unit. Shouldn't be a thing. I'm going to start a, I'm going to start a petition, man. <laughs> I hate them as an opening unit, dude. Just makes the opening round so slow and cumbersome and, oh. Can't stand it. Either way, it looks like maybe Blue is going to have the edge here. Oh my god, that shot was so bad. Yeah, I maybe thought that the blue might just shoot down the Arkies before all of his chaff dies. Which looks like it's going to happen on this side. Not so much over here, though. Bit more even. And, oh, look, exactly what he said is going to happen happens. It's a Stormcaller shootout. Completely random who wins this. The missile RNG. Clocks in for Sacco, man. Round one. 50 damage dealt or something. It's basically over, boys. It's over, man. How can Napoleon possibly recover from this? Okay, man. Missile strike, pretty decent. Rhino Spech, missile strike. Is there really that much separating these? I guess missile strike is a little bit kinder to your economy in this early round. So maybe we see a little bit of that action come out for both. The Phoenix Bias come out right away for Elio. Basically guaranteeing the win. Um, If all that's left is another Stone Cold shooter at the end. Missile dropping for Sacco as well. Both players going for just very, very greedy missiles. Which can kind of trust that people aren't going to barrier up on round two. It's too big of a supply investment. Look, oh what's going on with these predictions, man? What the? Sacco bet it on himself. <laughs> oy, 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 oy. That's the confidence player right there. All right, man. Both players just mirroring Phoenixes right now. Pretty tight. No sneaky crawler shenanigans coming out just yet. It's worth noting as well that the more spread out 
your storm crawlers are, the harder it is to pull off. Crawler shenanigans in the middle, uh, with wiggling your guys back and forth. It's harder to distract all of them in one fell swoop, that is. Ooh. Sacco rearranging his missile. Okay, it doesn't like that side. Decides to switch. Fair play to the lad. Oh, crawlers here might get wiped out too. Okay, we have like a smidge of crawlers left alive. Real question is which Phoenix pack is going to win the poke, uh, poke battle over here. Looks like Red's probably going to take it. Getting to connect first. This side bit more even. And honestly, right now, these rounds are just just extremely cookie cutter builds coming out. Uh, build orders, I should say, for the time being. No crazy shenanigans going on just yet. And all right, there it is. A tickle of damage goes the other way. All right, man. Okay. Unit options. Three packs of marksmen. Wow, Sacco just going straight into the melting point. All right, man. He's found success with melting points in the game that we watched just last time. In what we'll call the semis. Wow, both players opting into the melting point. Okay, man. That's quite interesting to me. These top tier players, man, really, really value just getting the melters out, I guess. Even if right now they have, like, no good targets to hit, they just value the crap out of them, I guess. Damn. Oh, Elio's actually only got one pack of crawlers at the back? That's got to be a little bit concerning. That's got to be a little bit concerning, man. I'm almost a little surprised to see the Arclight range enhancement come out first and foremost, rather than something like, you know, a mass recruit and like crawlers, crawlers, crawlers. Which I think just getting the crawler chaff set up would have probably been my play. The super, super early upgrade on the Arceys, man. Curious stuff. Okay. Oh my god. All right, I really didn't expect that. I was about to start theorizing of how exactly Bloom is going to drop... The remainder of his supply, but actually just goes double melting point. And the missiles here might just connect quite unkindly if he's not careful. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, not too bad though. You know what? I guess his melter is going to get to connect first here. On the enemy big blue. Oh, it's actually prioritizing killing these nerds first and then it will move on to the melting point. Okay, that's even better. That's actually huge, dude. And this is going to be a lot of damage coming in all of a sudden. And there you go, man. Just this shit, even this melting point actually lives on like a third health. Risky stuff. But paying off in spades. Sacco's got to be pretty happy with that. Now the question is, are we going to see him? Oh my god. Elio going into giant and Sacco going into giant hunter too. Damn, man. You don't really see this that often. Giant Hunter players coming out for both? Wow, man. Okay. Melting Point range. Now, yeah, are we going to see a Melting Point arms race here? Doesn't look like it. I was thinking maybe where Elio goes into Melting Points of his own and starts to also buy things like range tech and it just becomes a race of who can blast more Melting Points. <laughs> you do see that shit sometimes. But that said, what is Elio's plan here, man? He does go into the mass chaff now. Like I thought maybe he would have last turn. Which I think is really, really good, by the way. Very, very poor chaff clear potential right now on blue side. I think it's a big, big weakness. We have a lot of single target kill potential. And pretty decent chaff lines. Problem is, they're running into Arkies, right? They're running into Arc Lights. Um, They're going to be mowed down pretty quickly. Hmm. But then again, dude. Okay, I think that red actually is out strategying uh, blue right now, insofar as the boards currently exist and like potential for future rounds. But I, but the right now is quite is quite scary if you're red, right? Purely because this is a hell of a lot of health, and you're relying on a couple of level one phoenixes and one melting point to get these three giants dead. And so it's spooky, dude. This could easily go either way, man. I almost don't want to call this. I think, again, I think red is ahead with overall game plan. 
But he's at risk of just taking stupendous amounts of damage here. If he's not careful. The extra chaff buying red just a lot of time. But look, his firepower is just not that great behind the chaff right now. Which is the main concern. Like, as far as his chaff goes, it lives forever. But he's just not getting a lot done on this side. The melting points is obviously going to do a lot of work for us over on this side. But here we go, man. Sacco's melting points. They get the building killer just the right time. And that's actually just going to spell the dub. Oh, he doesn't even get the last melting point dead. And so red feels like he's doing damn good for a long-term plan. But the right now is becoming a little bit of a problem. Missile strike, tech specialist. Gotta find a way to actually get these things dead and get more firepower behind us, guys. Now, that said, Blue also has the opportunity now because he sees all of this chaff on the back line. I wonder if we're just going to see something like explosive ammo stangs come out uh, or even just a couple of Vulcans, you know? A couple of Vulcans come down, maybe. To... Oh, God, I guess not, actually. 800 supply purchased. Uh, sorry, uh, remaining. Fire comes out on the Storm Callers, and we're just going to be relying on Storm Caller Fire to kill off the enemy chaff. Oh wow, I just noticed as well, dude, double missile strike was actually available, and so we're missiling both of the backline crawlers here. That's actually huge. That's kind of clutch, man. That's really big, because these crawlers that are arriving late are doing so much work. They're getting so, so much done. Ooh. This might just be too much damage, you know. Additional metal point comes out right here. But with the EMP on the field. Oh, it doesn't quite hit this one. This guy does get EMP, but this guy does not. And so blue, I don't know, man. I think blue might just have this in the bag with this round, depending on how hard he wins. At least one melting point has to die on blue's side for Elio to have another chance at this, to have another shot. It looks like maybe this melting point is going to get burned down which is kind of crucial yeah it is going to connect and at least get that kill and so it's not over just yet elio still has some time to counteract this now the electromag barrage big problem best counter to that is anti-missile uh, missile intercept of war factories because they will shoot down those projectiles but that's a lot of cash the stangs Oh, wow, hang on, what the hell? Okay, I really thought Sacco would go for the Stangs. Goes for the Steel Balls instead. That is five packs of balls, man. I mean, surely these are also going to go into Mechanical Division. When you have this many on the field, it almost feels a damn shame to not do that. So is it going to be Mechanical Division and Subterranean Blitz on the Crawlers? So the Crawlers don't die to the fire, maybe? I think that'd probably be the player that I'd make as blue. What's red up to, man? Goes for fire on his Stormies as well. There's the mechanical division comes out. Subterranean Blitz also. Sacco has exactly the right amount of supply left to do it. Opts into just dropping some more Stormies instead. Alright, man. Can see that too. It's mass Storm Callers coming out for both players now. And no Subterranean Blitz coming out on either. In spite of the fact that we know that there's going to be so much fire on the field. That said, Elio still has 1,200 supply to play with. Oh, yo, 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 dude. This is going to be real tight. Actually goes for the War Factory in the end. Going to borrow cash and is actually going to pick up the Missile Interceptor after all. Which we sort of predicted might happen, but man, he borrowed cash to do that. He sold units to do that. Very, very costly gambit here. Is it going to actually be enough? To win at least on one side and keep enough stuff left alive here to defeat everything that's left over here. Because as these flaming missiles come in, oh my god, that chaff gets buzzsawed out of existence, just cremated over here, bro. Electro Mag is also going to connect on this melting point, and so it's going to be a steep defeat over here for Elio and a sharp victory for Sacco. Projectiles still being shot down. It does finally get electromagged in the end, so we're kind of out of fuel over here now. Oh my god, but the building dies at the worst possible time from Elio's perspective. And that's basically gonna be it. Oh yo 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 yo. The War Factory Gambit, close, almost turns it around. 
But damn, man. That's the line you're gonna trade, man, with Mecha, dude. Sometimes it can feel like you're tactically ahead, and that if I can just live, you know, uh, like two or three more rounds, I know that I've got this, right? I know that I've got the winning formula here. I know that I could do this. But just surviving those rounds, man, Sacco smelt blood. Went for it. Crazy, crazy health damage. Congratulations to Sacco, man. This tournament's weekend champion. I'm obviously going to have to upload this one a day late, so you guys are seeing it a day late. Sorry about that. But hey, anyways, hope you also did enjoy at least the end of this tournament cast. Very, very long to cast from beginning to end, and... Yeah, some nights I just don't have time and to pump them all out in one go. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy. Congratulations to Sacco. And I'll catch all of you guys just a tad bit later, man.